here to do a pick a card reading guys today's question is what do they say about me again the question for today is what do they say about me what are they telling others about you what do they say when they talk about you when someone asks about you what do they say right so in the extended we will ask what are their true intentions regarding you we'll also ask what needs to change in order for this to work we'll ask in three months where does this relationship have the possibility to be and we'll ask who should make the first move all right once again in the extended reading we'll get the inside scoop we'll ask what are their true intentions regarding you what needs to change in order for this to work and in three months where will this relationship be we'll also ask who should make the first move Keep in mind, this is a general reading, guys, so it may not resonate with everyone, but should it resonate with you, please like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, love your comments, need that thumbs up, YouTube is tripping still. Please, 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 if you dig it, give me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it oh so much. For all you haters out there who always gonna hate, if it doesn't fit, don't force it, if it doesn't fit, let it fly, if it doesn't fit... You must acquit. We don't play no games around here. We come together as a tribe, accountable for our actions and our reactions, and we respond in a mature, sound, whole way. If you can't live up to that, I ain't the reader for you. If you don't like how I read or I sing and I do crack jokes, you should log off now. I'm not the reader for you, okay? If you're going to try to make something fit and then get angry, you you I'm not the reader for you. I'm going to tell you why, because this ain't the smoke you want. It ain't. So you might as well just uh, keep on moving. Don't stop with your funky ass. Get the hell on. Scram. Scram, scram, scram. All right. But for everybody else. Once again, general reading may not resonate with everyone, but just take the bits and pieces that do. Take the bits and pieces that do, leave the rest of that shit on the dance floor. All right, so we have three choices as usual today. We got Crazy Love. Remember that song? She gave me love, 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 crazy love. We also got Sunshine. Don't worry about the sunshine. Don't worry about the moonlight. Don't worry about a good time. Blame it on up again. And we got give me a kiss. Give my fat ass a kiss, boy. Tonight I'm going to break all your shit, boy. I do not know the lyrics to that song. So what you going to choose? What it going to be? Read number one, Crazy Love. Reading number two, Sunshine. Don't worry about the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on a good time. Blame it on a good game. Don't you know it was sunshine? Hey, moonlight. Or reading number three, Give Me a Kiss. Come here and give me a kiss. I'll go crazy, crazy. Crazy for you, baby. Which one? Hmm? So, let's go ahead and take our deep breath and get this party started on three. One, two, three. Pick your card. Will it be crazy love, sunshine, or give me a kiss? Three choices. Crazy love, sunshine, or give me a kiss. All right. Well, you already know what time it is. I'm about to slide to the bite. Yes, Lord. And then we'll pick these up and we'll put this one over here. And we're going to get it started. So, universe, people who chose reading number one, we came to be nosy as shit per usual. You know how we do it, universe. You know how we get down on the get down. And we'll never mess around when we get down. Hey, get down on the get down. Hmm? Read number one. Crazy love. 
What does their person say about them? Please keep these messages as clear as possible. What does their person say about them? What does their person say about them, universe? What does their person say about them? First card out. I love you. Lover's card. <laughs> Y'all came to play today, huh? Y'all always give me a run for my money. I tell you that. You be like, Sony, if you're going to read, you're going to read. You hear me? Life without parole is what y'all be giving me. What does that person say about them? That's such a beautiful card. What does that person say about them? What? Ooh, we had a card slide under the cloth. We have the Knight of Wands. Hmm. Ooh, we. What does their person say about them? What does their person say about them? Universe, be as clear as possible. What does their person say about them? What does their person say about them, universe? We ain't gonna be shuffling for two hours. I promise you that. What does their person say about them? One card, please. Whoa, not 15, universe. What does that person say about them? I can tell you, your person does not... Your, your person holds you close to their chest. They're very protective of this relationship, and they're very careful at who they talk to about you. Because this person doesn't want to talk. What does that person say about... Oh, there it is. Ooh, I'm what y'all came to play? What what did I just say? Y'all and y'all didn't come to take no prisoners. Two of cups. I'm telling you, your person knows this is a sacred relationship and keeps this close to their chest. They don't talk to a lot of people about this. They don't need to. They know. What does your person say? What do they say about them? One more. And there it is. Five of Pentacles. What we got at the bottom of the deck? <laughs> bottom of the deck, chariot card. All right. Well, this flimsy ass deck. Okay. So, yeah, your person knows this is a sacred relationship. Two of Cups, lover's card. Come on, man. Come on. Seriously, does it get any better? Does it get any better? Look how flimsy they are. Does it get any better than that? This card is so fucking gorgeous. It's one of the reasons why I bought this deck. Um, so yeah, your person is very much aware of how sacred this relationship is. Look at how those colors break off. We got a lot of pinks, purples, little blues and blacks over here, right? Dark blues and blacks. And then over here, there's very light. This is very intense energy and this is very light energy and it's very healing. And... One of the things that I noticed when I first set these cards up, when that Knight of Wands came out, is that that horse is looking back at something. Almost as if, you know, that horse and that um, person, your person, have a good relationship. And I'm not saying, your person might own horses. Your person might ride horses. But they have a good relationship because your person is riding this horse without a saddle. Not in real life, y'all. But your person... This this person is riding this horse without a saddle. And so there's a lot of trust. There are no reins here. There's a lot of trust here, right? Um, and it's almost as if this horse is trying to get the rider's attention that they left something behind. That something was left behind. You know, it, it's like the ride or the horse is trying to get the rider to turn around. Something's something's left behind. And I mean, even in this chariot card, the horses are facing two different directions, but they keep, they're looking at each other. They're turning back towards each other. They're looking back as if something was left behind. So I'm feeling as if your person 
when they do talk about you, because again, they don't talk about you often or to many people. And it's not because you're not important to them. It's not because they don't care about you. It's not any of those things. It's because they know how sacred this relationship is. And they have a, a good understanding or a good understanding that this isn't to be shared with everyone because they don't, I think subconsciously, they don't want those energetic ties to this relationship. This relationship is intense enough on its own. It can be challenging enough on its own. They don't need anyone else's opinion to understand or understand what this is. They don't need anyone's help or opinion to shift in this relationship. But there is something going on with your person. I feel as if your person is telling Whoever they're talking to and whoever they're talking to would be like a best friend or it would be like a confidant. It would be like someone who understands to a certain extent the spiritual realm who is non-judgmental. Like my mother is not, I could tell my mother I'm dating a, a, a murderer on death row. My mom would be like, that is so sweet. <laughs> she would. My mother is the most non-judgmental person when it comes, when it comes to who I'm dating. She don't give a shit. And I feel as though that's who they've chosen to confide in when they do talk about this relationship with someone. And I feel like it would be more so like um, maybe a close girl cousin or a, a girl best friend or it's someone who has that feminine outlook and is extremely non-judgmental, extremely There's a lot of talk about we almost made it. We were almost there and, and something happened. Because that horse, these horses keep looking back. You guys are different and they talk about those differences. You got the fish there again. And they talk about how intense this process can be and how you all are shedding because in this lover's cart, you have that medical symbol that we use with wings, but it's the snakes. And you know me, snakes always talk about shedding to me, the shedding process, stripping back the layers to your soul, all the barriers that we've created that block us from love, which is inevitably the stuff that we're made of. And I feel as though your person feels bad about you all not being together right now. For some reason, you're not together right now and they want to rush in and be with you. But when they can do that, they can't stay. They have to go back. This could be somebody who is in the military. This could be somebody who travels, who lives at a distance from you or lives overseas or another state or they rush in so passionately and it's like when you all are together someone stopped the world yeah feels like a moment is coming i'm gonna get you girl Ooh, that was a horrible note listen to maxwell stop the world we gonna stop the world tonight. I'm gonna be with my girl tonight. Listen to Maxwell Stop the World. Oh, I love that song. So, the world stops. And they tell people that. They tell people about the intensity, but there's something still that is keeping you all from uniting. You all are shifting through a healing process and I don't think they know what to call it. I don't think they know wh exactly what's happening, right? Because we don't get roadmaps. We don't receive roadmaps to this, these connections. But they know something is happening on a cellular level, a soulful level, very deep within. They know something is happening that's changing them. This person may have to work um, in another country, another state, another overseas, um, because 
they they are in the process of becoming but they always come back to you i'll always come back to you no matter what they always come back to you i just feel like this person may have some type of um financial issues and when they talk about you and they talk about being with you and stuff. It's like they really want to build a good life for you all. And they talk about these financial issues. They talk, I don't, I don't know if it's financial issues as much as it is they want more in order to offer you more. But it's not in a masculine, selfish, I want to hoard and become the emperor. And, you know, it's, it's not in that way. It's in a very loving, open-hearted way. This is a really kind genuine thoughtful person it's just that their energy cannot just be with you they have work to do you both have work to do outside of this realm but the distance it's when they turn back that the healing takes place there's healing in the periods in which you all are separated and i don't think that that's rejected I don't think it's rejected. I think you all embrace it. And I think you all are, because these fish on this two of cups are both going in the same direction. It's not really an upstream downstream thing. It's not a, it's, I mean, you could be a Pisces. You could be whatever. I don't really give a damn about signs. You're in love. That's what I give a damn about. And this was written in the stars. You know, I want you. It's not a secret I try to hide, but I can't have you. There may be cultural differences too. One of you could be white, the other one black. One of you could be Muslim, the other one Christian. One of you could be uh, a Jew and the other one a Palestinian. There's some cultural differences here. You guys are a good balance though. You're, you're definitely the yin and yang of it all. The push and pull, the give and take. There's just something that this person hasn't come into yet. This person is still growing. This person could be younger than you too. But this person talks about how connected this relationship is. How, you know, when it's time, when they're planning a trip to come see you or they're sneaking away to come see you or whatever the case is, you know, to come see you, they, they are just like... Their person who they confide in is just like, two more days. Yep, I know. And they'd be like, yep, like 49 hours, 10 minutes, and three seconds. Like they know, like they get so excited and so like elated just thinking about being in your presence. And it's a very heartfelt connection. It's you all can feel each other on a very heart like a, 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 a like you all ah and this person has a difficult time saying what they say to others to you they have a difficult time expressing what it is that they feel for you because it's just so overwhelming i can't even really say anything about this reading you know there there comes a time for words and then there comes a time for silence because silence can speak so much better than the words can and I feel like you all spend a lot of time in silence just being with each other, making love, holding each other. There are no need for words when you have something like this. But this five of pentacles is what pulls them away. This five of pentacles is what pulls them away. And for some of you all, this could have been some type of separation that isolated you or them. Where you did, you felt left out, you felt isolated, alone. You know, it might not be money problems. It might just be that there was a situation that they had to go and handle, go and fix, go and look at in order to come back because that horse is looking back. So we have the chariot again, some victory, distance, you know. Um, And they rush in and their wings, their wings, their stars there. There's a star here with wings on it. This is so cosmically divided, div guided. I can't even talk. You have the return. They always come back to you. I, I feel like 
this person surprises you a lot, like when they come back, it's very unexpectedly as well. You know, but this person is working hard on something. And again, these colors, the way that it separates in my mind and energetically for me, the way that I see this is, this is very intense. And it's like, whatever this is back here, it's causing some healing. But they keep you with them. This person could very well be going through some type of separation with somebody else as well. And they're moving on. Or this person could be going through separation with somebody else as well. And they have some responsibilities that are back there that they have to take care of, whether it be children, whether it be a house that they share with somebody else. It very well could be two separate situations. This is you all situation and this is, this is another situation from the past that caused some, some pain, some heartache that really knocked them down from grace that, because I feel like this person may have started as the king of wands and got knocked down to a knight of wands. You feel me? So it's like, cause this three of swords is here now. So now we're talking about heartache and heartbreak and piercing through that. Someone, you know, having a relationship with someone and moving on beyond that. So this very well could be a relationship in the past that made them feel very isolated, that made them feel very alone, alone that they tell their friends about. Like, I, I've never had anything like this. Look at the colors. I've never had anything like this. It's nothing like this bullshit right here. Could be that as well. However, this shakes up for you, and I'll dig in deeper and get some clarity, clarifying cards in the extended reading, but that's what I'm feeling. It's either this person is going back to the past to handle, or not to the past, but going back to something to handle some type of job situation or something like that, or it's that this person has some responsibilities back there that they have to take care of. There's someone, you know, whether they were an ex-wife, ex-husband, ex-lover, ex-baby mama, ex-baby daddy, it'd be so many people. It could be something that they got to, that they that causes them to go away so that they can handle. There's a situation that causes them to go away so that they can handle. And there's healing that will be birthed from that. There's healing on a very soulful, heartfelt level. There's healing that needs to take place with those last two cards. So yeah, they, they think the world of you, you mean the world to them. Um, if they could be with you every second of every minute of every day, they would. And that's what they say about you, but they can't right now. And honestly, you don't really want that because the dynamic would change. And I'm sure these cards would reflect that. So you don't really want that, but this person is really working very hard at healing and very hard at um, creating wealth creating huh, it's it's wealth but it's it's like a middle class wealth it's just i just need enough this this is a good balance i just feel like this is a good balance i don't feel like there's an imbalance here i just feel like there's some unfinished business something that causes them to go back that's what i feel all right so i spent a lot of time on that one i'm going to do an extended reading on this if you dug that, give me a thumbs up now, please. Thank you. Extended reading. We'll get the inside scoop. We'll ask what are their true intentions regarding you? What needs to change in order for this to work? Um, in three months, where do I see this relationship at? And then we'll ask who should make the first move. Um, and I'll also dig in a little bit on those last two cards to figure out what's going on with that situation. But this person says i think i'm in love again i think i'm in love, love again that's what this person says all right moving on sunshine universe people who chose sunshine what does that person say about them? What does that person say about them, universe? Please be as clear as possible. What does that person say about them? People who chose sunshine. Got the nine of swords. You scared the shit out of them. That's what they say. 
What do they say about me? What does their person say about them? High Priestess. What does your person say about you? We got the King of Pentacles. What does your person say about you? Seven of Swords. Bottom of the deck, we have the Three of Wands. Your person thinks you're very quiet and that you hold a lot in. Um, they are afraid of you on an energetic level, you trigger a lot in them. And it seems like when they give in to you or when they're around you, or, you know, even when you all first met, their world shook up and they're noticing a pattern with that. They're, they're very much aware of the patterns that are triggered when you are around or when you're near or when you all interact, meaning, so, <clears throat> you trigger lessons within them and those lessons cause a lot of darkness a lot of pain a lot of shedding that needs to take place and this person is aware of that um so this person talks about how they try to sneak away from you but they're always pulled back to you they always come back to you and they know that you're always waiting for them you're always there this person knows that you're very committed you have a way with money as well. Money flows to you very easily. And you have good business sense. I feel like your career or some status that you have, um, I've, I've, there's something intimidating about you. That's what I'm trying to say. There's something intimidating about you. And when they talk about you, they say that there's something intimidating about you. It's it, There's something about you all's energetic vibrations that don't quite meet. They're not aligned per se, which is why they, they go in and out of your life. But then too, they always know that you'll be there. You really trigger a lot within them, quite a bit with that nine of swords there. But I feel as though they say that, or they're coming to the realization that you're worth it. Because this person is like, I'm sick of this shit. I'm finna slay these dragons. I got shit to do. You ain't finna keep me up. I need sleep tonight. But they always get pulled back to you. Whether they ghost you, whether you all argue, whether they sneak away, whether you sneak away, they always get pulled back to you. They always, always, always get pulled back to you. They, they are aware of your spiritual side, the spiritual aspects of you, your inner knowing. It intimidates them. You intimidate them quite a bit. I'm not sure they even say that, but you do. You all have a lot of secrets too. Together, there are a lot of secrets between you guys. Did you guys run off in a lope and some shit? There are a lot of secrets between you all that only you two know. And, and they tell whoever they're talking to, because this is not a person who talks to others a lot. They tell people that they feel comfortable talking to you. And I'm not sure they've ever felt that way about anybody. They're very comfortable around you, but that intimidates them. Very comfortable in your presence very willing to open up to you. And I feel like that was a slow progression to get to the point where they were wanting to open up to you. That took time. That took a lot of time. And they talk in like riddles and rhymes. They're, they're, it's just not straight up. It's not just, I love you. It's like, you know, we should go to whatever sacred place they have in their mind. And then you get there and you're just like, okay, we're here. And then like 10 years later, they tell you, I took you to like my favorite place. I've never taken anybody there. You don't know I love you. What? No, I don't. What? How does that even make sense? Right? What the fuck? So, yeah, I just feel like you're a person is intimidated by you and an intimidation, something that you trigger within them, that intimidation causes them to walk away quite a bit. 
and your person doesn't feel that you're deserving of their they because they are sneaky there's there's because they just hold a lot back and we'll dig in deeper to the seven of swords to figure out what this is in the extended read but they hold something back they definitely hold back and so they 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 know that it's going to catch up with them at some point they might not be telling you the truth about what they're going through currently but it's going to catch up with them because again you have this spiritual side of you you have this inner knowing you follow that intuitive nudge and you know something is not quite right and they've been trying to hide it from you and this could be a vast myriad of things this could be you know, they lost their job. It, this could be, you know, uh, I don't I don't feel like it's anything where it's like they're, they're holding back a person. It could be. I got to clarify it. And, you know, when you start clarifying shit, it goes crazy. But it could be. But I don't feel like that. Let's dig in the bottom of the deck. Let's see. So, yeah, your person knows that you're always waiting on them. Sees you. See, what did I say? Sees you as someone very spiritual, someone very passionate. They see you as being very beautiful. Your person thinks that you're very gorgeous. And I feel like your skin is very tan or dark. You have vibrant skin. Something about your skin, the color of it, the pigment, the melanin, is it, it glows. Like Especially when you get kisses from the sun. Your person could be at a distance from you right now. Or there could be some type of separation between you all. I feel like your person is well-traveled or you're well-traveled. Maybe that's what they're telling people. Like you're well-traveled. That intimidates them. Like you've been around the world and I, 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 right? Like you've been around and you've built things up for yourself. You, you are independent, but you just have an in, intimidating presence. Yeah. So for many of you guys, I just feel like they walked away simply because they feel intimidated by you. See, because you you've created all this shit by yourself and they're like, oh, I got to put in some work here. <laughs> but look at what's coming. Yep. So, yeah, that just made a lot of sense. I get it now. So, yeah. I'm going to do an extended reading on this and I'm going to ask what are their true intentions with you? What needs to change in order for this to work in three months? Where will this relationship be and who should make the first move? If you dug this reading, please give me a thumbs up. Um, but yeah, this person is intimidated by you and this person feels like you have more than them. And this person is in the process of working to align with you, fighting their demons um, so they can stop going away from you. Like the inconsistencies in their energy, they're filling in those gaps. All right. So if you want to follow me, please do. If not, I get it. You ain't got to. It's cool. It's cool. Move right along. Foot loose and fancy free. Moving right along. All right, read number three. All right, universe. So what does their person say about them? What does their person say about them? Please be as clear as possible. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Lover's card. Lover's card came out in the first read. Here we go again. What does their person say about them? Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords came out in the second reading. It's like these readings come together in the end, don't they? What does that person say about them? Ooh, Death Card. Two major iconas. Uh-oh. What does that person say about them? And Four of Pentacles. Bottom of the deck, another major arcana. We got the Strength Card. So your person says that they hold back from you because they are going through a spiritual transformation right now. They've had to walk away because they no longer want to fight and they can no longer keep off this transformation that they are enduring and going through. And so they hold back. Your person is very good at holding back. But it's like I always say, you can't do this type of healing in front of somebody else. You have to. I mean, 
the the caterpillar eats all these fucking leaves and then goes off into the cocoon to become the butterfly it doesn't like tap dance in front of the ants and and all the trees and shit and say i'm i'm becoming a butterfly i'm becoming a butterfly look at me look at me no it goes off into a quiet place into a chrysalis state into um a protective shield so that it can get its wings and that's what's happening with your person this transformation cannot happen in front of you it can't it can't you you triggered the transformation this connection look at that light that's emanating from that heart there you triggered this this connection triggered this transformation it can't happen there and as brilliant as that light is that's emanating from that heart that is um acting as the sun there's an awareness that came to them that they have to go through this transformation it's time it's time and so i don't feel that you guys are together in a sense i don't feel that you guys you may not even be talking right now but this is what this person is doing they are going through this transformation they're in a cocoon phase right now protecting themselves shielding themselves mm -hmm. And that's what they're telling people. They hold back a lot though. This person has done some things and is reflecting upon the things that they've done. I mean, we all do things, but they're reflecting upon the things that they've done in this relationship and they're talking about that and they feel pretty bad about it. I feel like this person put their, their put everything before you, honestly. And they're reflecting upon that. They, um, they put their job before you. Definitely put work before you. Because this person is like coveting, like sitting over this money here. And I feel as though this person has dammed up the flow so much. This person has gone through um, a, a very dark transformation where there was seemingly a lot of loss. They're just making space, but they don't understand that, right? So they're losing things, losing houses, losing jobs, losing status, losing money, losing cars, losing family, losing friends, losing dogs, losing cats, losing chickens what the fuck losing everything and it's just like are you serious and i don't think this person has a lot of space right now because they're in that cocoon so they had to throw everything else out the caterpillar don't take a leaf in a cocoon ain't no space you gotta make space for your wings to sprout so this person has gone through a period of loss However that resonates, energetically, um, yeah, it's definitely on an energetic, spiritual level. And I feel as though in the beginning, their ego blamed you. They, they kind of saw you as like bad luck. Like, why did, I, why did I tell them this? Now, look at what happened. I lost it. And they like blamed you for their losses. And they're reflecting up on that now because they're coming into a better understanding or a better understanding of, you know, intrinsically things are changing. Their whole makeup, their DNA, their genetic code is changing. Because they're, they're becoming the butterfly. And that's what they're saying. They're in a very dark place right now very dark place and they're telling them that they do miss you they miss the light that emanated from you all being together you you guys are a hidden gift together you're voltron together right so let's see we got the strength card major arcana hangman major arcana yeah this place person has had to make a lot of sacrifices to really remove themselves what did i say this person is in a very dark place and has removed themselves from everything just about 
And it's really in between worlds. You see the landscapes, this is darkness, and they're shifting into the light. So they're in between worlds, so they can't see clearly. And they're afraid of the dark. Nine of Swords, a lot of anxiety, a lot of sleepless nights, waiting for this all to be over with. Three of Wands here, waiting for this all to be over with, waiting for their turn for something to happen. And ooh, I just saw the card underneath it. <laughs> Yep. Waiting for their turn. When is it their turn? When are they going to stop losing? What the fuck, universe? Why, why, why? Why does this keep happening to me? Why do you keep asking why? That's a debilitating question. What's supposed to grow from this? What in you should grow from this? What do you need to release to move through this? What bags have you been carrying? Why is such a debilitating question? Why is this happening to me? Why wouldn't it happen to you? You wanna fly or not? Huh? You can sit on that tree and eat all the damn leaves you want to. You spend the rest of your life crawling around on trees getting picked up by birds and swallowed and reincarnated into another caterpillar until you get your damn wings? Or do you want to go off into a place of safety, go into the darkness, surrender to the process of becoming the butterfly? You choose. You choose. But as long as you keep that victim mentality, that victim consciousness, you're going to remain a caterpillar. And I think right now this person is still in that victim consciousness. And they're they're talking to this person about that, about not understanding why this is happening to them. And I feel as though this person was enabling them in the beginning, but now they're just like, you gotta get your shit together, yo. Like, seriously, it's been years. And you're still in this darkness and you don't understand that you are the reason that you're still in this darkness. You could have been out. But I feel as though, you see how dark all these cards are and how light this one is? I feel as though you are the light at the end of the tunnel. Memories of you haunt them. And they tell others, I can't, can't get it out of my head. Miss her, kiss her, love her. I know y'all said wrong move, you did. <laughs> they can't get you out of their head, man. And like I said, it, it's been some time. Whether months, years, I feel more so years. It's been some time. Why am I still thinking about this person? What the fuck? They can't get you out of their head. Cannot, 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 cannot. Yep. They got to surrender to this process. And I feel like they will. I feel like they will. So, yeah, I'm going to do an extended read on this. If you'd like to follow me, the link is down below. I will be asking what are their true intentions regarding you? What needs to change in order for this to work? Where do I see this relationship in three months and who should make the first move? All right. So if you dug this reading and it resonated with you, please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for chilling with me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.